This is code.org. Let's see what we're working on. You will be building this Remind app. Oh, does it work? Add reminders. New reminder. Hello there, world. Ah. Okay, hello there, world. This is a test. I can't wait to build this. Oh, where'd it go? Oh, it added it. I'm good. T, 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 T. Favorite reminder ever. Okay, can it loop it back? No. Can we? Okay, cool. All right. Uh, explore. Add several reminders. We've done that. Scroll through. Yep. How many lists do you think you need to make this app work? What programming patterns with the list do you think you'll need to use? Um, I think we might need the counter, counter pattern, right? For the index, maybe, or for the location in the list or the array. So index equals index plus one as we go through the different parts of it. I think we will need variables to store the actual information here. The number of lists we will need, I know we'll use at least one. I don't think we'll need more than one because it's a list of reminders. So let's get started on it. All right. Oh, wow. So they gave us this to work with, but no code. Cool. So we can solve that. What do I want to do first? Well, first, what do I need? I need to know that I can put text into this thing. So let's do on the event. Now on the event, what? Well, let's say on the event, they click the add button. And I know it's the ID because I'm hovering, but we could also go to design mode. We could change the theme, but uh, add mode, right? So add button is the ID. All right. So I'm going to do add button. And so when the user clicks on the add button, what do I want to have happen? Well, I want it to do what they were doing, right? They had typed in some junk here. The person clicked add and it slaps it up there. Okay. How can I get that text? Hmm. 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 Well, I'm going to need a variable. Okay. Now, am I going to use this variable more than once? Let's think about this. So if I put in a variable here, uh, stuff. My variable is called stuff. What do I want to get? I want to get this stuff. So let me see. Reminder input. Okay. So I'm going to go to UI controls and do get text, right? This will be text and it's going to get reminder input. All right. So now my variable stuff is equal to get reminder input. So when I run this, if I hit add, well, first, hello, or whatever, add. Now let's check out, I'm going to put my variable in here, not available. So this is a point, it's not available outside of the function. So the whole program doesn't even see it. It's going to be hard to push it up here into the top of the screen to set the text up here if other places don't have access to it. Also, we're going to need more than one variable, right? We're going to need more than one thing because we're going to need a list. So I'm going to call this um, all or inputs, all input. My list is going to be all input, or I could even be input list. There we are. And then for JavaScript, which is what we're programming in, you need square brackets. Okay. So just like that is what we need to make our empty list. Now that we have that empty list inside of this on event, on the event that they click something, well, I want to add to a list. What have we learned? How can you add to a list? We use that weird thing called a pin. And a pin is where we can grab something and smash it onto the back of a list. So I'm going to say input list. And what do I want to append? Well, whatever they've written here. So I can do what I was just showing you. How do I get what they wrote? Get not get number, get text. Get text of what? Oh yeah, remind input. So now if I do input list here, add, and hit run. Okay. Input list zero. Fred. Boom. Now we have something. Yo. Boom. And it will just slap them in. It adds them. This is the length of the list, which is two. So that's a start. We got our items now going into a list once they click the add button. We need them to appear up here. So how can we do that? Well, we would set the text. I'm sure you just screamed at your computer. Um, or set the Oh, property works as well. So let's set the property of the screen. Now, think about this, though. When are we going to need to change up the screen? 
we're going to have to change it when I click add, certainly, right? We'll have to slap that text. Or also, what if I click these other buttons here and here? Hmm. So maybe this should be a separate function. Instead of having set the property, right? Instead of using set property six different times to have it put the text up here, we should just have a function that's used by everything. So I'm going to have a function called, and we've seen this before too, update screen. Okay. And what's update screen going to do? Well, it's going to grab our text and push it into this thing. And that thing's called reminder output. Yep. So when this function runs, I'm going to say set the property reminder output. What property text? And what do I want to set it to? I want to set it to our list. But do I want to set it to our whole list? No, we didn't have every item from the list appear in the example, right? If I set it to the whole thing, okay, so now I have my update screen. And I'm going to slap the function call beneath everything here. Up, up one line. So after we add something, I can update the screen for now. Right here. All right. So I need to update screen. And I'm going to separate these out. You don't have to do this. I just do it to make it easier to read. All right. So update screen. Let's hit run. Boom. It doesn't know what it's doing. Value parameter high is not a UI string. Yeah, we put the whole list here. So we have to tell it what index. We need another variable. We don't know what index we're at. So index, let's start at zero. The first item of a, of a list is indexed at zero. I'm going to create a space again. Be so we want to start at index zero. And then when we set the screen, we're just going to tell it to change the screen to whatever index we are currently at. So boom, my variable index. Hi, add. And it says hi. Okay. Now when I click on these arrows, we're going to want to update the screen as well. So let's dive into the arrows and the arrows are what's going to change this index value. It says high right now because index is zero. When it says input list index, it grabs what's at index zero, the word high. All right. So now we need the arrow functions. That's called left button, right button. Easy enough there. UI controls on event. I'm going to do both these real quick. Left button, right button on click on click and what are we going to do we're going to use index right so equals equals now when we click the left button are we going to go up the list or down the list are we headed towards zero or towards a hundred well when we click left we would subtract so i would do index is equal to index minus one this is the counter pattern right so i'm saying hey index is equal to whatever index used to be equal to minus one all right now for the right button what do i want to do so the right button would go up the list right so index is equal to index plus one because we're headed towards the end of the list now after i click these what am i going to want to do well once i click them i'm going to want to update the screen see the user has changed the index so they're going to want to see the new item on their screen so let's run update screen we need to call that function and that will grab this new updated index that we changed right here and put out that item on the screen yo add no add we're not seeing it yet though i added it twice let's see click boom 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 t add Q add. So there's counted here too. We need to update that property. So let's take a look at this counter output. So now on update screen, we're also going to want update screen. We're going to want to set the property of counter output. So set property counter output text. And it's just going to be equal to the index plus one plus one because the index starts at zero, right? Arrays or lists start at index zero. The first item in our list is index zero. The second item is index one. But we want to display this in normal way, not in like the computer index way. So I'm going to do index plus one. So it will display one to start us off. Okay, we're getting there. We still have a major issue. So I'm going to put a reminder for hi and then bye and then Frank. 
Alright. Now let me go through them. Bye, Frank. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. It let me hit over still. Theirs doesn't do that. So let's take a peek back at theirs real quick. I'm going to hit run. Boom. Boom. It won't let me. So we need something that can check that. We'll need an if statement to prevent that error from happening. So in my update, I need to make sure they're not trying to go too far so we don't error out. So I'm going to do an if statement here. So to prevent them from going off the edge here, we need to make sure if index is add button is less than the list's length. Input list dot length. And it has to be less than the input list length because remember indexes start at zero. So if you have a list length of 50, the computer might say you have 50 things. So that's your length. And that's correct. That would be your length. However, how many indexes do you have? Well, you have 50, but you start at zero. So you have an index at zero and then all the way to 49. So the length 50 means your last index is 49, which is why we need index to be less than the length of the list to make sure it's within the bounds of that list. So if it is less than the length of the list, then we need to, ah, what is this? This should be down here. Then we need to allow it to add to the index. We're talking about the right button. I shouldn't have been up there. We need it to add to the length of the index. So we're going to add one to the index and go over one little slide, right? Because there's more stuff happening. We can let the right button work because they can click. We'll add one to the index. Then we'll update the screen because there's new content. There's still stuff over there for us to see. And otherwise, we won't do anything. We're going to put everything in that. So I'm going to do the same thing up here for left button. But this time, I want to make sure it's greater than zero, greater than or equal to zero. So maybe I'll do greater than negative one. Because we have an index of zero, but we don't want to go past that. So now, if index is greater than that, we do this. Okay? And that will make sure they get stuck. Mm, oh, something I almost led you astray on. So since we're subtracting or adding to index, we need it. Index doesn't need to be greater than negative one. So if index is zero and we drop into this, well, index is now equal to what it used to be. So if it was zero, zero minus one is negative one. And then we're going to run an update screen with a negative one index. That can't be. We can't do that. So index would have to be greater than zero to run this because you wouldn't want to subtract if you were under zero or if you were equal to zero because that index doesn't exist. Same thing for here. Let's see. Index would have to be less than, hmm, it would have to be less than the length, but less than the length minus one. Because if it is equal to less than the length, it could still add one to it. That would be equal to the length. That would ruin everything because we don't have a index at the length, right? If you have 50 items, you have indexes zero through 49. So I need it to know, hey, just because this is 49, that's less than the length, right? The length would be 50 items. Just because this is index 49, you can't add to it because that index 50 doesn't exist because indexes start at zero. So we really need to fix those. All right. Now, that being said, a few things too. Notice this new remind on their application when they use theirs, it stayed there. So to get that to stay there, we're going to have to add, where's our update screen? We want to blank this out each time it's used to make sure it doesn't have anything stuck in there from last time. So what was this called? Remind input, I believe. And then we're going to set the text. And what are we going to set it to? Just blank. And the reason this should work is if I click on this, notice the placeholder. So anytime this item is blank, it should automatically just become that text. That is important too. All right, now what else do we need? Well, let's take a, one, a quick peek at theirs. When you hit run on theirs, notice add reminders pops up right away. So they must be doing that with code. They also must be running their app immediately. Let's 555, I don't know. Ooh, and that number goes up. All right, so we have a few things left. Let's see what we got. Do we have... Okay, so we got that portion. Now let's check out what this is. Count output. Okay, so on updating the screen, we should update count output. And, oh, 
What am I saying? We got that. All right. Then what we need to do is make sure that's it. We need to add the remind me is what they have on theirs. Add reminders. That's right. That's what they're going to have. So what I should do for that is I'm going to set text or set property. Reminder output text. And then to make it just like your, theirs, I would do add reminders, explanation point. Now, we don't want this to happen all the time, right? That's not what we want going on. Now, let's see, add button. Since this is clearing out the, app, the area of the add reminders, I'm going to put it up with the add button. So it will wipe that out. So boom, get the text. And we have to have this after getting the text, right? Because otherwise there would be no text there. So we get the text and we append it. We wipe the text and we run update screen. And then when will this happen? We want to make sure that there's index. If we don't have any info in our list, it will cause an error. So we're going to do an if statement. Boom. And what I'm going to say here is if uh, we need the length of it, right? So the input list dot length is less than one. So if nothing's in it, if it's less than one, then we're just going to say, hey, add reminders. Otherwise, in all other circumstance, do this. All right, let's test this out. Yo, add. Hi, add. No, add. And it goes right back to add reminders. Boom, hi, no. Notice we can't get over. Good. Now we're updating our numbers. Is our number still correct? Yes, it is. Can we keep going? We have a fancy schmancy remind app. Sweet. That one was tricky. So a few things that I would point out, finishing touches. When I hit run, it doesn't update right away. I'm going to want to do a function call here up at the top. And I'll space mine out so it's easier to see. Where we're going to ask update screen to run. Keep in mind, though, if you don't have your if statement right, that's going to produce an error right away because you don't have this is an empty list. So if you don't have an if statement here, that's going to mess things up. But yeah, right away, we can ask it to run and that way it will populate just like theirs. That yeah, that was um hard. Yes, I'm having just fun now. Ah, that was challenging. Lots of code, lots of useful stuff we are learning, and we're really going to be able to make some powerful applications uh, in the future. Heck, we already kind of are. Onward.